everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the reasons why you might want to consider studying environmental science and when I say environmental science I mean the large spectrum of subjects that that covers like wildlife biology, ecology, botany, and all of the subjects under the realm of environmental science. So let's get started. I am a form of an environmental scientist. I'm a wildlife biologist and I graduated in 2014. So I've been working in this field for around a little over six years now. I want to give you guys some indicators of why I think this job was right for me at least. So if you're deciding whether or not to go into this major or study this subject, um, hopefully this will help kind of get your thoughts around your pros and your cons for environmental science. One of the main reasons why I think people should think about studying environmental science is when you look into the future, whether or not we change everything around and climate change is halted in its tracks, we still have a lot of work to do. There are so many contaminated sites, restoration that needs to be done, environmental changes to be made, policies to be adapted, so much environmental work that has yet to be done. Even if we take the bleak approach looking at, we didn't make any changes and now, and now we're barreling towards a more negative environmental impact into the future, there still is going to be a lot of environmental work that needs to be done. Um, either way, the environment is not gonna go away, even if we want it to, it's always gonna be here and we are going to be facing increasing risks of climate change impacts, climate refugees, contaminated sites, global warming, sea level rise, all of these environmental tragedies and disasters that could happen and they are going to need scientists and informed people to help mitigate against the future of our environment. So that's one of the main reasons why I think more people should study this field and get involved in environmental science. Another reason, this one's a little bit more personal I guess, is I actually think environmental science is very um, applicable to a lot of different fields. Even if you never want to go out and be in nature, in the environment, there are so many policy sustainability types of work that can be done in an office or with a traditional business. Um, as we're starting to see consumers demand more and more environmental accountability from companies, we're going to see more companies start to prioritize uh, the environmental impact of the products that they create or the impact they have in the world. And a lot of times companies will hire sustainability consultants to help them um, make sense of all of the data coming out around environmental science and how to create a more sustainable path forward. And then of course, if you are interested in nature and being out in the environment and into the field, there are also plenty of opportunities to do that as well um, under a more traditional scientist sort of role. This is more like what I do, field studies, traveling to observe wildlife, plants, to conserve species in the field, and taking the endangered species that are incredibly impacted by all these new developments that are being approved out there in the world and to try to mitigate um, impacts to those species. Of course, academia, research, scientists finding new things that we never knew, new species we never do. There's so much to learn and really we don't even know the half of it right now. There are so many environments and insects there that haven't even been discovered yet and could be discovered by you guys. Another reason in this era of misinformation uh, with climate change we need more people that are looking at the science and are able to bring that scientific perspective into our communities and to communicate uh, environmental science effectively both online um, um, you know, through Twitter and YouTube and Instagram, but also in person and bringing those concepts that might not make it into the media, species that, you know, you might not know about, all of those sorts of things from the scientific world into the everyday world to help inspire people in their everyday life who aren't scientists to help and care about the environment. I see this as a huge future area is environmental and science communication um, on social media is this new huge thing where I'm even seeing people who aren't don't have science backgrounds taking information and bringing it to the public through science communication and when we have more scientists doing that as well that is extra great so I think science communication and art is a big way to help inspire the public to care about the climate and to make these changes that need to be done very soon um, you know if you are 
thinking about environmental science, you probably know how little time we have left to change things around. And it's not gonna be done with people doing the same old stuff that they normally did. There needs to be a huge movement to come and bring and change people's minds who might not believe um, in science. <laughs> I guess I'll put it that way. Um, so we need more scientists who are young, who are excited, who are passionate to get into this field. A lot of industries rely on people not being informed on environmental science and climate change and that's how so many policies get put in place that don't help our environment so the more you learn and the more you understand even outside of a career perspective about the environment the better choices we are going to be able to make and communicate to help the planet here's another reason if you care about the environment and maybe you're experiencing eco-anxiety, it can feel scary to take all these courses that are basically learning about all the ways we can be harming the planet, but there is still positivity in this field. Um, when you help a nesting bird and you're able to protect its nest from industrial development as maybe doing bird sweeps as a biologist in the field, those little things, you know, uh, working at a rehabilitation center and successfully releasing a condor, an endangered animal into the wild to survive and thrive and help its population, those are the upsides and the bright sides about this field that truly like keep me through all of the darkness and the sad stuff that you see happening. So there absolutely is positivity and light and happiness in this field. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, it's important to understand it all so you have this basis of knowledge to draw from um, rather than ignoring stuff that is depressing or sad. It's important to understand it all and to take it all in and to um, bring that forward with you into your work. There's the, there's the good sides and the bad sides in there, but having experienced eco-anxiety myself, it does feel like I have helped the planet and at least I'm doing the best that I can do as a informed scientist to help species and help the planet versus I feel like if I was a consumer and just was doing some other job, I wouldn't feel like I was doing everything that I could with my own knowledge and my own brain. And that gets hard when you look at all the social issues associated with environmental science and just in general the social issues in the world it feels like everything is demanding your attention but I know that the environment and the earth and nature and the planet that's my strong suit and by playing up my strong suit I can make the biggest impact to that segment of work that needs to be done so if you feel this connection and love to animals the planet that could be a huge indicator that this field's gonna feel really good for you if you are more interested in going to environmental science for other reasons such as money or um, you know social clout I don't know if it's environmental scientists get any like social clout but some of those reasons maybe I would reassess if this is the right field for you but if you feel it like deep inside you that you've always had that connection or you're slowly wanting to rediscover that connection with the planet and help heal going forward uh, that could be a little indicator that uh, that passion and that spark I guess is telling you that this is the right field for you if you come from a community that has already been impacted by climate change please consider studying environmental science and getting into the field of science and biology because your input, your direct lived experience is incredibly powerful and having that science background to even back up and to write down on paper all the things your community has experienced, that is so huge. And so if you were from a community impacted by climate change, I'm thinking like Northern indigenous communities, marginalized communities in the United States that have been impacted by environmental racism, uh, those are such important perspectives to have into this field so I would also think about it if you have that lived experience to bring alongside and use the science to enhance uh, and to document that experience in your own communities I hope this helped you guys get some ideas around why or maybe why you shouldn't study environmental science if you're interested in seeing more videos from an environmental scientist hit the subscribe button down below and the like button on this video special shout out goes to my new patron Adam Larson Thank you for supporting my channel. If you guys are interested in joining my Patreon, you can join at patreon.com slash wildbiologist. Thank you guys and all of the patrons I have for your support. Thank you guys so much for spending the time watching this video and supporting my channel and my work. I will see you guys next time. Bye.